Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. How's everybody getting along? I hope you had a good Christmas, New Year, all the holiday fun. Well, it's back to work. Let's take a look and see what we got going on for your new year. Yeah. Do we have any snow prospects? That's what many of you are asking because it's been hot as a furnace and a firecracker here across the east. Well, look at this feature. This is going to be interesting. This is right around the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Look what's going on across the U.S. East Coast here. There is some sort of trough. This may be enough to get some sort of coastal system developing. And if that weren't enough, and if that weren't enough towards uh, the third week of January, this is where we could be seeing... Uh, some sort of major trough starting to set up here across the east. So let's get into it. All right, so the feature I want to show you here, take a look at this. So that's not uh, too impressive here as we go throughout the next week. Um, you can see Tuesday, we have this little feature off the U.S. East Coast. A uh, big system out west. This is not what you want to see for East Coast snowstorms. But watch as we go out in time a little bit here. We have this feature it is showing up prevalently here on the Euro bottle. This is Wednesday next week. It's going a little bit negatively tilted here. And if this tries to ride up the coast, European model is a little bit more or less aggressive with it on this run. Uh, but you notice this piece of energy up here over the northeast and the main piece going way out to sea. If somehow these systems can kind of come together and combine and we can have maybe a little bit more blocking up here, we may have some sort of a snowstorm or potential coastal low. See how they start to come together, but it's mainly a little bit too far off the coastline here as we go out in time. But it's definitely something really to keep an eye on because look at it sets the stage for this massive system. We could have some sort of major East Coast system here come towards Sunday. January 15th so let's keep an eye on it all right so let's take a look at the European model here you know as we go into the weekend we get rid of that snow into the northeast here especially around Massachusetts that pulls out we get a little bit of a lake response as I showed you on the HRRR model and take a look at this as we continue in time do we have any sort of interesting weather we get this area of high pressure retreating and look at this we could have some severe thunderstorms for your Sunday afternoon across parts of the deep south so definitely keep an eye on this big system plowing into the west coast this could be our piece of energy we're looking for here that could bring that potential east coast system later next week now take a look at this this is interesting just off the east coast here by monday the 9th we could have a system but the european models taking it well out to sea so as we set into next week we get a series this is what i was talking about here this is before the big trough that sets up january 20th onward we get these series of impulses riding down now th these seem to be a little bit too far to the southeast as I showed you, onto the upper level air pattern. But take a look at this. This kind of blows up into a monster off of, you know, down East Main here. This could be some precursor to watch. This is the pattern we're getting into as we go in time. And take a look at this. This next system, this is right around the 14th. This is what I was telling you about. This trough that dives down the 12th and the 13th, take a look at this. We got a cold high pressure to the north. Look what is forming here across the Carolinas. This could be a big coastal system look at this this might be the coastal that you've been waiting for across parts of the northeast and you got that perfectly positioned high over quebec canada all right so let's take a look see if there's any snowfall of concern out west the mountain snow is going like gangbusters to take a look towards the end of this this is from the 15th of january this might be an interesting time to you know take note of this this is a system the euro is really trying to grab onto with that interesting pattern all right, so here we go with the potential snow here for the Northeast. It's not going to account to too much here, but let's take a look. We start off with the HRRR model here. We get into potential snow as we go into early Friday here. Take a look at this. So we got two areas. There's not going to be too much back here across western New York State. There will be wet rain changing to wet snow here. But as we get into parts of Massachusetts, parts of Vermont, Concord, New Hampshire here, yeah, we could see some, you know, advisory criteria, snowfall amounts. Look, could even get into the western suburbs of Boston by 10 a.m. So this is definitely an interesting solution here. Take a look at back here. We got more rainfall. There's a lot of warm air wrapped around this uh, second upper level low here but take a look at this yeah we're gonna get some pretty decent bursts of snow here just west of worcester and northwest of boston here so you might pick up uh you know two to four three to five inches somewhere in this area uh to the northwest of boston and mainly north and west of worcester here although that will be moving into the worcester area and parts of the western suburbs of boston come 2 p.m so if you have a afternoon or evening commute look at this yeah 
you're going to actually get a couple inches of slushy wet accumulation here on the western Boston perimeter here. And that is some exciting news because I know some of you have been waiting for some of that snow. And that pivots into the area 7 p.m. Look at that. It starts to look a bit more like a nor'easter here across the northeast. And look what we have exploding behind it here. You guessed it. It is the lake effect snow pattern. And some of these, you know, they're, they're, they look a bit more multicellular. So not, you know, terribly organized. But we could pick up at least a couple inches out of some of these uh, snow bands that form off Lake Erie and Lake Ontario through Saturday at 1 p.m. All right, now let's take a look at the HRRR model, see what we got going on for snow. This is pretty decent, you know. We'll see that advisory criteria across parts of, you know, just northwest of Boston here. Most of Massachusetts heading on up to southern uh, New Hampshire and Vermont. You know, some isolated areas might see up to four, maybe five inches. And look at the lakes. There's a quick lake response Saturday morning as well. You see a couple inches of snow here. All right, so taking a look at the surface here, precipitation-wise, we're taking a look out west here. We got this big old system here for Thursday into Friday. Now, take a look at this here into the northeast. We have a system that's going to pinwheel around a little bit. It's going to bring some wet snowflakes here, uh, particularly around Massachusetts and then western New York, western Pennsylvania. Accumulations are not going to be warning criteria. We could have some advisory criteria amounts up here in the parts of Massachusetts and then up into the mountains here, but any stretch of the imagination yeah we could see some wet snow here 4 p.m into the boston area but watch how that pivots out to sea and as we continue in time here take a look at this we get into early next week we have another system that might try to make a run here for the mid-atlantic but it seems pretty weak at the moment and then we get a period of quietness here we get the system coming out of the gulf of mexico and take a look at this that kind of pinwheels up the coast but it has very little fanfare now this system on thursday it seems to be a plain states colorado low type cutter but watch what happens here as we go in time you can actually see let's uh, just continue it here take a look at this so we get snow on the upper perimeter here and then look at this by friday we start to get some evidence that there may be some coastal development with this system and we may have an interior i know you along the coast are not happy to hear this if you want snow but it looks like a potentially another interior snowstorm, although things could really change between now and then. So, you know, this is flipping back and forth. This is just one bottle solution. You can see this could actually turn into quite a big system here into the northeast. So this is something I definitely want to keep an eye on here. The next system kind of cuts inland a bit more before bringing more snow in. But here you go. As you get into parts of the southeast, I'll just show you briefly here. You know, don't read too much into this. This is nearly 240 hours out, as you can see. But look at this. Yeah, this is some eye candy for you. There will be a system rounding the bend here on the European model. And it is indicating come Sunday, the 15th, from 14th into the 15th of the weekend. Take a look at that. You know, 6, 12, 18 inches of snow here across the Appalachians into parts of Virginia and North Carolina. All right, so let's get a rough sketch of the temperatures here, see what's going to happen as we go throughout the next couple weeks. So take a look at the European model. Keep in mind, these temperatures this far out are not that great, but it gives us a really good idea seeing what's going on. So as we had next week, this is Monday, uh, January 9th. So as we take through the weekend, look at that. Yeah, the lows, they're kind of cold there into parts of the northeast, but look at that. The, over, the, the daytime highs are in the upper 30s. That's not bad. So as we get into next week, we start to get this evidence up here. See this massive Arctic plunge? Yeah, the uh, bottom's about to fall out as we head towards the third week of January. And you see, this is just waiting for something to bring it down here. This is by Wednesday afternoon of next week. You can see there's some pretty cold air bottled up just north of the Canadian border that's trying to spill down here. And this is where we really start to get, you know, a big push here across the eastern part of the country. Um, that does kind of move up to the northeast, though, and we do get a moderating trend initially. This is towards the 15th, but look what's going on here along the east coast. There's some cold air definitely being brought down on the backside of what could be a coastal system. All right, so for my Caribbean friends, Central American friends here, Atlantic, take a look at this. Yeah, the tropics are beautiful this time of year. And if you know anything this past hurricane season, this is a nice brush of fresh air. You got those northeasterly cooler winds, lower humidities, and look at that. I don't see many fronts getting down into your neck of the woods here if you're in Jamaica, uh, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Belize. Look at this. All the way through Saturday 
January 21st. Get out there and enjoy. All right, so if we take a look here, we're taking a look at the Western Pacific, a year tropical and typhoon outlook. Take a look at this. Yeah, it's going to be a rainy go of it here if we get across the southern Philippines, parts of the central Philippines as well. Take a look at this. This is by Friday at 7 p.m. So as you're starting your nice weekend off here in the Philippines, yeah, if you're in the northern Philippines, it looks pretty clear. But look at this. That pretty much dissipates by Saturday at 4 p.m., Saturday 7 p.m. Take a look at this. Yeah, you got a big old blob of moisture just east of you. If we zoom out just a bit, you can really get a sense of, you know, this, this pattern that's really bringing on, um, you know, this cooler air to the north here. You can kind of see a frontal boundary up here and some of this tropical moisture coming in from the east as we got these trade winds going. So let's continue out in time, see if we see any areas of major concern. Well, it's just a lot of rain and cooler temperatures here than you're used to here across the central and southern Philippines. Look at this. This is Monday, the 9th, and as we get into Tuesday, let's see if we see, this is uh, quite interesting up here. This little feature might try uh, to hold on for a bit, but I don't think any of these look any sort of development. But if you're across, especially the central Philippines, come Wednesday of next week, January 11th, definitely keep an eye on some of these heavier rains. You might have some flooding problems in some areas. Um, but look at this. By Friday the 13th, there it is. You're starting to clear out a bit. But as you break it by Saturday, this little feature to the north, I'm a little concerned about. Take a look at this. This is kind of resembling some sort of tropical low, and it may have its eyes set on the Manila and northern Philippines area. Let's take a look as we go in time. You can actually see it bears down on the northern and central Philippines and kind of takes a veering stance towards the southwest here. Now, look at over here towards Vietnam. We really clear things out here to the west. Look at this. This is some nice weather for this time of year, but if you're in the Philippines, please stay tuned. Things are getting a little active here. That kind of stalls out with a frontal boundary, so it gets sheared apart. That is the good news. But on my concern here across the central part of the Philippines is some rains that may cause some flooding. This is Thursday, January 19th. Take a look at this. There is a lot of tropical moisture in the area combining forces with that front to the north. But you can see all of this stratus deck here to the north making it down into the central Philippines. That means some cooler air is making it down from the north. And it's pushing this tropical moisture to the south. But it tries to come back north come Saturday, January 21st. All right, so taking a look at John here, we have freezing fog, M62, Manchester, Yorkshire, motorway, UK, 15 degrees Celsius. Take a look at that low of negative 3 Celsius. Take a look at that fog as he was cruising out on the roadway uh, this past Saturday. Look at that. So, yeah, dangerous situation, a lot of fog this time of year. So, if you exercise some caution, if you come across this, nice captures here, John. And extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Upper Susquehanna River Valley, Binghamton to Scranton, New York, Pennsylvania. Take a look at this. Friday, that cold front comes through showers in the morning, ending by noon, only a tenth of an inch. It will be turning colder for the weekend. Look at that, 36 and 39 for your highs, dropping down below freezing. This is normal for this time of year. And then we prop a little bit back up above average towards the lower 40s come Monday and Tuesday. But the big question mark remains later next week with that potential maybe a coastal system. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Northeastern and Weather Eastern. Don't forget Facebook Media Mark, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern at Susquehanna Weather for my local page. And guess what? MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com is Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget, question or comment down below. Smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell button, share the video, and thanks for joining me.